from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Platinum's new kid on the block, Wissies where Platinum continues to make good headway on the development of its flagship Bakobung mine in the northwest. Recently celebrating the cutting of the first level of the ventilation shaft, some 690 meters below the surface and 45 meters above the first intersection of the platinum-rich Marinsky Reef. Mining Weekly's Natalie Grieve traveled to the platinum belt to find out more. The Chinese-backed Wissizwe Platinum appears seemingly unfazed by recent tensions in the platinum-rich Rustenburg area, forging ahead with the development of its envisaged 420,000 ton a year underground mine, which would, upon completion in the latter half of 2018, be accessed by twin independent vertical shafts and a shorter third shaft during its 30-year life. Bakabung's most recent milestone was the cutting of the first level of the ventilation shaft, on which horizontal development would now begin to connect it to the same level of the parallel main shaft. Wissizwe Project's executive Jacob Motumukolo told Mining Weekly Online that the latest milestone was one of a number of targets achieved thus far this year, with continual progress made in sinking the main and ventilation shafts, pre-commissioning the ventilation shaft winder and overall project sinking. The sinking, shaft sinking, when you get your flat development, it means you are starting now to progress into opening up the reef. Uh, that will uh, lead to start of mining. We are currently just going to stop uh, 15 to 20 meters out of the station and then we come back and we continue sinking. The shaft depth is at uh, 880 meters below surface. It's uh, planned to be done by uh, uh, 2015. Um, and that's basically where we are at uh, today. On the main shaft, we're standing at 520 meters below surface. Uh, it's also uh, progressing fairly well in terms of the planned targets. We will be cutting the first station at 720 meters uh, below surface on the main shaft. It's another three to four months. He added that the shaft ventilation sinking team had encountered an unexpected geological fault as it progressed vertical development. As Matthew would have put it, it's smack bang where we're starting to cut the station, but the guys are busy. The technical team has done all the assessments. We revised all our uh, rock supporting uh, patterns. Uh, the guys are busy uh, putting that in place. What it means it, uh, is, is we might slow a bit down in terms of um, going in quickly and out, but that's, um, that's the nature of mining and we take it in stride. Wissizwe has meanwhile made good progress on the development of its main shaft, now forecasting the completion date for the 970 metre shaft, October 15, 2015, to be 85 days ahead of the initially expected completion date in January the following year. Similarly, the ventilation shaft was expected to reach its final depth of 880 metres in November 2016, some 72 days ahead of schedule. This followed the commissioning of a mine optimization study late last year that investigated ways of bolstering the project's business case by incorporating recent changes in the platinum business environment. The resultant plan outlined that an initial 230,000 ton a month should be mined from the Marinsky Reef, with the balance sourced from the secondary UG2 Reef. Once the Marinsky Reef was depleted between 10 and 15 years from the start of full production in 2021, the full 25,000 tonne capacity would comprise UG2 ore only. The plan has since been approved for implementation and it's seen cost savings of some 2.2 billion rand. Other news making headlines this week. The Department of Public Enterprises promises swift action on ESCOM sustainability. SAPI emerges as a world player in the specialized cellulose market and Golda Associates launches its new building. South African electricity utility ESCOM will present a comprehensive sustainability strategy to the economic cluster of ministers by the end of June, outlining proposed solutions to its current financial, operational and asset creation problems. The board and the executive has subsequently formed a task team that is mandated to implement certain intervention strategies underpinned by our overall strategy of sustainability. Behind that sustainability strategy, we have three key agendas. These agendas inform what we are doing going forward. 
Pulp and paper group SAPI Southern Africa has diversified its operations to include the export of specialized cellulose, a grade of pulp which it produces and from which it generates a revenue of about $800 million a year. The South African operation is currently the largest producer of, of, of this product, the specialized cellulose. We hold about 15% of the global market share. We are the single biggest producer in, in the world of specialized cellulose to the extent where we've actually just spent three billion rand upgrading one of our big pulp facilities down uh, just outside Nelspruit and in Gondwana to increase the capacity as such, where we will now be exporting in the region of about a million tons of, of this grade of pulp um, annually. Consulting firm Golda Associates launched its new building in Midrand recently, where MD Dr. Ralph Heath stated that the new building represented a shift towards a refocused collaboration for Golda and its partners. The reason was really simply that we had five different buildings in Johannesburg. It was really important that we amalgamated our staff actually to come together for a whole lot of good reasons. One is that we found face-to-face -face is far better for integration and innovation. So um, we put that all together in this building and we're finding it's having a huge impact on just getting to know each other better being able to walk across the room, go and speak to somebody about engineering solutions that we actually weren't able to do in the past. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.